We believed the bullshit. We did. We were asked to believe, and we did. Just so happens, some of it turned out to be bullshit. It happens. But we thought it would be different. So let's talk about it. Before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button now. If you're new to the channel, I appreciate you for uh, giving me a chance. If you're a real one who's returning, yeah, I know how we about to get down. This is the really most entertaining sports show in the game. Let's put it on some. Extra emphasis on realists. Because y'all know what I'm about to do. I'm going to tell the truth. We believe the bullshit. And to anybody who has something to say about Jackson State supporters in this moment, the only thing that you might be able to hit us with that is accurate is that we told y'all not to believe that bullshit. That'll be fair. That'll be fair. But before I go further, let me make sure that new viewers know why I'm uniquely qualified to speak on this, on why Jackson State supporters and shit, maybe even HBCU supporters in general, are disappointed that Coach Prime left to go to Colorado. Yeah, I graduated from a PWI for undergrad, University of Southern Mississippi. And I didn't choose that school just because my grades was bad were, were bad. Like <laughs> HBCU graduate and Pro Football Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp said, that's not why I chose Southern Miss. My schools came down to Southern Mississippi. Jack State, and Millsaps. And I chose Southern Miss because I needed to see diversity. Because I come from a place called Canton, Mississippi. My whole side of town black. When I was growing up, wasn't no Hispanics there. I think it was one white person and she was married to a black man. So I knew that life. The high school I went to wasn't real life. It wasn't real life. I'm a kid who came from struggle when mama got down school teacher and paying tuition. But shit, I'm there with motherfuckers from upper middle class. So that shit wasn't real life. So this is real life, Jack. Open my motherfucking eyes to some shit, Jack. Open my eyes. I needed that shit. I ain't choose uh, Southern Miss old Jack State could think Jack State was second rate. And I ended up coming back to Jack State once I decided to be a teacher. I went to Jack State to get my teacher certification. So I've seen both sides. I'm uniquely qualified to talk about this because I've been a lifelong fan of both Coach Prime and Jack State University. Whole life. But Prime used to come out there and get down. He'd be about to uh, uh, return a punt. He turning the crowd up, and then he go take that bitch to the house. Hit that prime time dance. See what kid didn't love that shit? Them hard ass shoes he had back in the gap with Nike. What? You had them bitches in black, red, cowboy color. I ain't have my mom wasn't doing that, but so other folks have them and I wanted them. And of course, Jack State University. I mean, it's right down the street from Ken. In Ken, the, 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 the high school band is called the Baby Boom. You see Jackson State come to the parades, the boom play. You get to follow the thing. Legendary Wavy Dave. I, Wavy Dave scared the shit out of me as a child, by the way. Scared the shit out of me. 
I was scared when that was a little bit of boy. I was scared when I saw that tiger coming down that dumb ass. But I was a kid. But I have all these memories. So lifelong fan of, of both Prime and Jack State University. I've been a teacher and a coach. I've been a damn good one. Damn good one. So I've had to lead people to graduate from high school. Without me, they don't graduate from high school. You feel me? That's most important. But also, we won. I won as an assistant coach. I won as a head coach. What Won. And now I'm an entrepreneur. Who, too, is on a fucking mission? I'm on a mission. And that's something I pointed out to Coach Prime. Because I've been seeing the writing on the wall, y'all. And I know some real ones who are returning you, in the past. You may have wondered why was I uh, uh, doing segments about him leaving and all that kind of shit. Because I've been hearing. His partner, Shannon Sharp, had said he talked to the man once a week. And been saying every time they would do a segment about the shit, he would say the man gonna dip. Prime, when he would do interviews with them big publications and stuff like that, would basically insinuate, yeah, he was trying to leave. Shit, my brother, who is plugged in more than anybody I know at Jack State, when Prime got a job, he told me, man, three years, man, you know, it's just business. But Prime got the talking. He got the talking. And he asked us to believe in the shit he was saying. So I was hoping that he shared my vision, my mission, which is to help my fucking people. That's my mission. Now, I know when he got to, I've been in Colorado. Now he's saying his, his mission is to help. God has called him to help all people. That's cool. I want to help all people too. But my people fucked up. So I got to fo focus my attention there first. It, it, it go back to teaching or coaching. Okay? U.S. history, my specialty. So if I got a kid that's an advanced reader versus a kid who's a struggling reader, okay, for whatever reasons, I need to get that struggling reader a little more attention, don't I? If I'm coaching and I got me a five-star boy who can do everything, I might not need to make him stay out for extra shots the way I need to get this boy who can't make a goddamn layup. I need to get you to stay so we can work on some fundamentals. I got to give you extra attention. So, goddamn it, I got to give my people extra attention. And I thought maybe he was recognizing that. That's why when I made that segment previously telling Coach Prime not to hang up on God, because he said that God, he said, not first letter said, not Jack State supporter said, he said that God called him collect and he accepted the charges. So I added him on Twitter. I said, at Deion Sanders, you're a master recruiter, showman, businessman, and spiritual man. So am I. Part of my mission is to motivate men like you to use your wealth, power, and prestige to aid our people. I asked them to watch the video in the tweet below to see why I said, don't hang up on God. One. I'm sure he ignored that. Either he ignored it or he wasn't persuaded. But I'm going to error on the side of he ignored it. I don't have a check by my name. And I'm not finna pay Elon Musk bitch ass $8 for it either. If I ain't over one by my name, God damn it, they just gave it to me, Jack. Okay? But I ain't got one of those yet. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't diss them either. See, they seem like that. Some folks only pay attention to you when you too are a celebrity or you too are somebody that they think are notable or you come at them sideways. I didn't do that. So I'm sure that was ignored. So I thought he could be persuaded at least. I thought maybe some of us real ones could get him to 
See, it's bigger than some fucking football. That didn't happen. Now, in his video that he released, you know, because they, they skipped the press conference. But in the video that was released, he says his reasons for leaving are to show that a black uh, coach can do it at that level, you know. You know, because black coaches have gotten fired and they're not getting rehired and all that shit. What he said, Coach. I hate to tell you, but goddamn, Mike Tomlin won a Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Tony Dungeon won a Super Bowl. That's the highest level. Fuck a Pac 12 title. Fuck a college football playoff title. They won Super Bowls. And you see these white owners don't want to fuck with a black coach in the NFL. And you see these white presidents and ADs don't want to fuck with a black coach at the big PWIs. You see that. They want you, coach, because they know the black man going to follow. Can you Deion Sanders? He said he left because God wanted him to go to Colorado to provoke change. Well, we're going to look at uh, take a deeper look at Colorado uh, in another segment. But just based on what he said in the introductory press conference and stuff at Colorado, See, like he makes it seem like Colorado is heaven on earth outside of them not winning. Look around, look at all this. Ooh, I don't think I'm wanting for nothing. Oh, such a, a um large and uh in what we say, 30 some thousand people and no crime. <laughs> His assistant say uh now they can breathe fresh air. Some of y'all some of y'all caught that. What fucking change? What what what's need to be changed? Y'all make it sound like it's the Garden of Eden outside of the fact they can't win no fucking football game. I hope that the God I believe in with all the fuck shit that's going on I ain't giving a damn about Colorado football winning some football games. Compared to an historically uh, downtrodden people in one of these chocolate cities, Jackson, Mississippi, and historically the most racist state in the union, rising up. I hope that the God I believe in ain't prioritizing Colorado football over those people. But hey, he said that if it wasn't for the kids in that room, the players, that leaving Jack State wouldn't be hard. Go back and watch the Cold Prime doc and all that kind of shit and going around the city and motherfuckers talking about going to uplift the people and uh, Mayor Lumumba and, and Governor Reed need to get this water crisis together and all that kind of shit. Now, maybe he thought about business or maybe his PR person got with him and now he went and posted and said something to the fans and said all that kind of shit. But that's what he meant in that motherfucking video. He said it wasn't about the money, but it was about the opportunity. Now, that brings me to two points with that. 
that it wasn't about the money, it was about the opportunity. Now, previously, it wasn't about no damn opportunity. It was just about the fact that my coaches ain't got the kind of money I make, and I got to take care of my coaches. Where that shit go? Now it's about the opportunity. Also, a lot of these motherfuckers out here that are trying to come for individuals who are disappointed in him leaving, they say... Well, y'all, wouldn't y'all take the money? Y'all gonna quit acting like y'all wouldn't... Hold on, the motherfucker said it ain't about the money. So what are y'all doing? Are y'all saying that he's lying? Y'all calling him a liar. Because again, listen to his words. Again, that's why motherfuckers disappointed because we were listening to this motherfucker. Uh, and maybe y'all ain't disappointed because y'all never listened. Y'all, y'all already knew it was about the money. So y'all going to fault us for listening to our coach, listening to a guy who basically portrays himself as an evangelical Christian. And we hear the words coming about his mouth and we hoping that, hey, maybe he'll take, you know, uh, take this shit seriously and, and uh, take heed to what the fuck he's saying. That is it's bigger than just me. God has called me here to provoke change. Football team changed. Won back to back swag championships. Okay. Facilities got upgraded. That's changed. He donated some of his money to do that. That's changed. Okay. That's real. And if you had left it to that, folks would be cool if you had just left it. Let's just keep this bitch right there. All that other shit wasn't needed. All the other shit ain't needed. See, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe some motherfuckers different, but I don't like motherfuckers to bring God into something when it's clearly about the green. I don't like that. Don't bring God into uh, well, me. I, I don't get down with, with, with these uh mega pastor, mega church pastors, and stuff like that. T.D. Jakes and the uh Osteen cat, all them cats. They can miss me. They can miss me. Maybe you like one. I ain't cake. Cool, that's you. But don't bring God into something that's clearly about this money, dog. Don't bring movement into something that's clearly about money. Just keep it to the business, and we understand business. We understand business. Black people understand business. Again, outside of the Native Americans, no motherfuckers in here have been more fucked up financially than us. Nobody. They fucked over Native Americans too. I gotta say that. So we understand motherfuckers going to get their money. We know how the game goes, but don't tell us it's not a game. Don't try to convince us that it's not a game. Okay? Just come in, do your coach talk. Um, happy to be here, happy for the opportunity. Uh, look forward to winning a lot of football games. Uh, my, my players will be smart, tough, fast, and disciplined with, with character. Just leave it there. We will. Uh, we're gonna graduate these players. Leave it there. All that other shit ain't necessary. It's like when you know, uh, some women respect a man. You know, when you're out here trying to date and shit, some women respect a man that say they just trying to fuck. They do. You got to. Don't try to lead the motherfucker on. You just want some pussy. You just want some pussy. That motherfucker just wanted a chance to prove he can coach because he tried to get jobs with these white folk before Jackson State. And they said no. They did not believe he could do it. So he needed a platform to show that he could do it. Jack State gave him that. Ashley Robinson gave him that. President Hudson gave him that. A chance to show that he can do it. That he can recruit. That's number one. They can build a staff. And win. That's what he got out of it. And folks don't want to acknowledge that. Oh, he did a lot. 
Y'all ought to be happy. God damn it. This $5 million a year that he just got, he wouldn't have got that if he didn't come to Jack State and prove that he could win. Yeah, they, they said, show me. And he said, I'll be back. Okay, I'll go down here and show y'all, and I'll be back. And see, we believe the bullshit because we thought, let me speak for myself, I thought maybe he says, prove it. I thought maybe he says, what? I'm Deion Sanders. Do y'all know who the fuck I am? I thought maybe he looked at Steve Kerr in the NBA who didn't have to prove it. They looked at Steve Nash in the NBA who didn't have to prove it. Then maybe he looked at Jeff Saturday in the NFL who didn't have to prove it. And he said, I'm Deion Sanders and y'all motherfuckers trying to do this to me? Fuck y'all in. I don't need your money. I'm going to stay with my people. That didn't happen. It was just business. It was just business. But at some point, at some point, those who want to be change agents, at some point, I'm exclusively talking to black people here now. At some point, the black man and woman got to stop being for sale, man. And we're going to get out of the fuck shit that we've been in since 1619 over in this bitch. At some point, the black man and woman got to stop being for sale. Again, I'm uniquely qualified for this talk. Let's look at history. Look at what's happened over there in Africa. You look at the uh, transatlantic slave trade. See, a lot of motherfuckers don't like to acknowledge the fact that our own people had some fucked up ass uh, roles in that shit. And I'm not telling you nothing I've learned from no white books. I'm telling you shit I've learned from black scholars. Black scholars. About how slavery existed over there, especially when you had like war tribes and shit like that. And so you might take somebody that lost the war and take those, those, them as uh, those that you didn't kill. You might take them as your slaves for your tribe. And then in come the white man. And go to the tribal leader and and shit. Make a deal. And buy some of them people from you and then brought them across their fucking war. Now, these black scholars had told me that that slavery there differed mightily from the chattel slavery that existed uh, in America. But it was still, it sold out for the money. You gave your people away for money. Or maybe you say, well, it wasn't my, their people. They were more of their people than them white folk that brought them over here on them ships. But we did that. A lot of folks don't, don't, don't like to acknowledge our role in that. Or in colonialism, when all them European countries came to Africa and were taking over shit. Part of the reason they were able to keep their stronghold so long is by striking deals with black people on the ground in those countries who would go along with the bullshit they were doing. Or you could take right now, when China is coming in and buying up Africa. Striking deals with a handful of people while the rest of the people fucked over. You could take Uncle Tom's in America, who throughout, six, since 1619, you got motherfuckers who will uh, uh, do whatever to be elevated over their own people. No, it's what Malcolm X talked about with that house Negro mentality. Been going on. Ain't nothing new. And I'm not saying that Deion Sanders is an Uncle Tom. Not saying that. I'm just giving you a rundown on all these situations where black people have put their own personal elevation over the collective elevation of their people. That's what I'm doing. You understand? But it's been instances that some of us couldn't be bought. 
And if you think about it, really, really think deep about it, I, especially all some of y'all out here, wouldn't you take the money? Y'all know y'all would take the money. And mother of these public figures saying all this shit, think deeply. Because some of the very folks I'm finna name are some of the main folks you respect. And you respect them because they couldn't be bought. Dr. King couldn't be bought. That man came from a middle class black household. He did not have to do none of that shit he did. He didn't owe us anything either. He said he was called by God. That led to him getting fucking shot with a high power rifle. He had already pushed to get the Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 65. He had already done that shit. He could have been at the house chilling with Coretta. Still out there doing his motherfucking thing. Why? Because he knew we still needed this money. When he got killed, he was with them fucking sanitation workers. He was talking about economics. He was talking about that bullshit ass war in Vietnam. He didn't owe us that. He had already delivered two monumental things. He ain't owe us either. Malcolm X didn't owe us. The man went to prison, got out of prison, changed his life with the Nation of Islam. He could have just went along, been a preacher in the Nation of Islam, lived a long life. We see Farrakhan living a long ass life. But when them four little girls got killed in that fucking bombing, and you got JFK get killed as well, all that shit made that man feel some type of way. And even though Elijah Muhammad told that man not to say shit about it, he just felt some, he just felt too passionately that our children were being killed. It wasn't his kids. It was not his kids. The four little girls in Birmingham. But he was thinking outside of himself. Speaking on that JFK shit, got him kicked out of the Nation of Islam. The federal government pounced on the beef between Elijah Muhammad and Malcolm X. And basically facilitated that main death. He ain't know us nothing. Mega Evers ain't owe us some motherfucking thing. Military man, all corn man, loving wife. He ain't had to goddamn be risking his life around here in Mississippi trying to get motherfuckers to vote. Shit, motherfuckers that they got the right to vote still don't want to go do it. He ain't do none of that shit. He ain't owe us nothing. He got gunned down his fucking driveway. Fred Hampton, who got assassinated on the day I'm taping. That shit weird. Just so happens. That young king didn't owe us shit. The whole Panthers in general didn't owe us shit. College educated men and women. Very intelligent. They could have just organized their free lunch, free breakfast, and all that kind of shit and shut the fuck up about everything else. No, but they knew we were getting fucked over by these police. And the federal government systematically dismantled them. Maybe some of y'all are saying, what y'all want a football coach to be a civil rights activist? I ain't saying that. His words said that kind of shit. He the one talking about provoking change and doing all this shit. I ain't say that. Jack State fans ain't say that. But let me get away from the civil rights leaders. Let we can go to sports. Muhammad Ali ain't owe us shit. Muhammad Ali did not owe us shit. That man won the heavyweight championship of the world at 22 years old. At 22 years old. And told them, folk, I know God, I know the real God, and I want justice. Woo, what the fuck? 
22 year old black man in the 60s? What you talking about? What had animated his spirit? Something that happened to uh, Emmett Till. It ain't happened to him. He ain't owe us that. He ain't owe us uh, uh, standing up and speaking out against that fucked up Vietnam War when you got family members right now that fought in that shit. My father fought in it. Mental scars and all that kind of shit served uh, at Camp Lejeune. The, the shit you be seeing them commercials about. He drank some of that fucking poisonous water. My mama was there with him, drank some of that poisonous water. And Muhammad Ali was calling out the fact that this is bullshit. You got black people who ain't really free in America being drafted to go over here and fight? Fuck it, I'm not going. He didn't owe us that because if he had taken that step and was inducted into the army, he would have gone over there to entertain the troops. Just like Elvis Presley did. Just like Joe Lewis did. But that man said, fuck that shit. Man lost three and a half years of his fucking prime. He lost millions of dollars. He did not owe us that. Bill Russell ain't owe us a motherfucking thing. But Bill Russell stood up as a proud black man and wasn't taking no shit off done these motherfuckers. Speaking out on all this shit, stood there with Muhammad Ali when he was going through his shit, sitting at Portier, still in the entertainment business, ain't owe us shit. But he refused to take a role that was demeaning to black people. I'm sure those roles would have been lucrative. He turned down money. Some people turn down money. Some people do. And you respect them for it. You respect them. You say happy birthday to Dr. King on his birthday. Happy Dr. King. Day. The NBA and NFL, they going to say shit about him and all that kind of... Oh, you know the NBA going to have an MLK day full of games and all this shit. You know it. Folks swelping down. Muhammad Ali, they got them hero. Motherfuckers getting all these tattoos of Malcolm X and shit. They went and saw that movie about the black messiah with Fred Hampton. You respect them. Because they couldn't be bought. Because they turned down money. Any of these folks either would have been richer than what they even were, or they would have lived. They just would have shut up. Take the money. Dr. King could have left all that shit alone, wrote books, and made all his money. You can go listen to the tape with the FBI came to Malcolm X try to get him to fucking talk. So fuck y'all. Some people stand on their morals rather than this money. Some people do. God damn it, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I saw a motherfucker earlier on the internet talking about uh oh, hold on. I'm finna tell you directly what this motherfucker said. Everybody calling Deion Sanders a sellout. Post a picture of your employer. Motherfucker named Torrain Walker. Now, I posted my picture, but I don't call. I'm not calling Prime a sellout. I'm calling him a bullshit artist. He's a businessman who bullshitted us. That's what I'm calling. But I did post my employer. I'm my motherfucking employer. You looking at him. I jumped out here on my own. To be an entrepreneur. Because this would give me the freedom I need to do what I'm doing right now. I turned down money. I told you I was a great teacher and coach. My youngers will tell you. If you follow me across social media, you see when I post shit that my youngins say about me. My youngins love me, and I love them. You understand me? But we were successful as well. So when you're successful, what do you say? You, you get elevated, right? And they what co say. They tried to elevate me. Got called out of my room. I went into a room with the superintendent at the time at the school I was at. White man shook my hand. 
told me he wanted me to be a prince. I was gone the next year. I was gone next year. Because I know that they, they were going to try to muzzle me. My pay was going to increase. Because see, as a white man I saw in uh, Walmart one day told me, he said, I don't agree with old Jesse Jackson on much. But I do agree with this. In education, the further you get away from the kid, the more money you get. That shit real. So they were trying to take me away from the kid and give me more money. I said, no, I got to go. I knew it was going to be shackles come with that money. going to be a muzzle come with that money. The only thing I like about this shit is working with the kids. Y'all not finna do that to me. Fuck that. Some of us value morals more than money. Now, some motherfucker might say, well, didn't you leave the kids? I wouldn't have left the kid. I would have stayed as a teacher. If I didn't think they were going to fucking fire me. What about if I'm in the fire prime? What, 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 for what? For what? The man, he's a good family man. Uh, he's in a committed relationship with Trace Edmonds. I don't see my head doing no fuck shit with women, fucking around and shit like that. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't no charges on him or nothing like that. He not finna speak on nothing controversial. You know that. You know he said he don't do politics. Well, nobody finna fire him for nothing he said or did. But as a teacher, especially in the state of Mississippi, let me just say in the state of Mississippi, I don't know about the other place. They try to make you sign some kind of educator code of conduct. And basically, you can't, they don't want you doing anything in your personal life that's going to jeopardize you walking into that classroom. It could be as simple as, hey, don't post a picture with you having a beer with your partners or something like that. I don't know. But I know I got real shit to talk about. You're not going to tell me not to talk about what's going on in this country. And then simultaneously, I got to teach about the First Amendment. I'm not going to do that. Fuck that. I appeal to the ACLU for help. I tried to get them to help me. I tried to say my civil liberties are at stake. They didn't help me. This letter was from 2017. I left in 2018. Shit, that guaranteed check every month would definitely help me in my businesses. But I value my morals more than my money. And it's going to take longer for my money to come. But I'm going to get it. As long as I got y'all real one down with me. But I got to keep those morals. See, I could have dissed Coach Prime to get his attention. And don't. this is not a diss right now. But I could have dissed him and added him or do whatever, ripped him a new asshole to get his attention. We've seen some people do it. He responded to that shit. You might even get a sit-down interview with him. But I ain't do that. Hell, I could release sensationalistic videos and shit and go viral, but I ain't gonna do that. For some of my song, I got a song called On Her Birthday. I hit online. See, I, I do my music marketing over there on Facebook. Collectively, the videos surrounding that song got over a million views. Got another song called Excited. Good, good records. I could easily go. Me and my brother Tim G. Jacob drop some money, go to the strip club, get a bunch of big brutal bra bras in the video, goddammit. Boom. And, and go, blow. But that ain't that does not match my motherfucking brand. Some people put morals over their money. And it's slow money, but it's show money. So quit all these motherfuckers come out. You know you would do it. Speak for yourself, motherfucker. Some of us, some of us are trying to be like King and Malcolm and Mega and Fred and Muhammad and Sidney Portier and Bill Russell. Some of us are trying to be like them. Unbought, unbowed. And Coach Brown could have been him, them, more easily than anybody else in this situation. Especially more easily than me. I ain't rich yet. I ain't close to rich yet. This man was already rich from his playing days. 
he has national endorsements that increased during his time at Jack State. His legacy got a major boost by being at Jack State. Again, lifelong fan of Coach Prime. When I'm growing up, ain't nobody attached change agent to Coach Prime, not to Deion Sanders. Nobody attached that. No, I don't remember when I was growing up, Deion Sanders speak. Deion Sanders was like Michael Jordan. Y'all see how Michael Jordan don't speak on none of this shit? He, he don't, that, that's how he was. That's how Prime was. That seemed like that's, that was the standard back then for the black athlete. Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Deion Sanders, Emmett Smith, all them boys, it seemed like they were apolitical. But what they were doing, they were getting that money, and they probably talking about this shit behind closed doors. But Coach Brown told you, he don't do politics. He don't do none of that stuff. But now, at Jackson State, now it became, oh, y'all see what he's doing for them down there. Yeah. That added something to his story that was not there. And like I said before, we believed in him in terms of coaching before anybody did, especially Colorado, Power Five. Shit, I don't even know if these goddamn group of five PWIs uh, uh, were believing in them. And if they were, they definitely weren't trying to give him the free reign to do what the fuck he wanted to do like Jack State did. Come on, man. He was uniquely positioned not to have to chase $5 million per year. Come on. Some getting getting money and endorsements. He keep balling like he ain't going to get money in the NFL. They, put, they already have generational wealth. Dr. King, middle class household, that wasn't generational wealth. Malcolm X, everything he fucking owned belonged to the Nation of Islam. Mega Evans uh, uh, owned a home in Jackson. Go look at his home. It's a humble home in a, middle, a black middle class neighborhood. Fred Hampton wasn't no rich man. What the fuck we talking about? He got killed in an apartment. Now, when I get to the athletes and entertainers, they had the bags, but they were willing to risk that shit. They're willing to risk that and sacrifice money. My three and a half years of being the heavyweight champion of the world in the 1960s is... I just don't think I can fully get people to understand how that was because box people don't view boxing like that now. Picture Floyd Mayweather and what he's accomplished monetarily and put that shit on steroids because this was a heavyweight with, with more charisma than Coach Prime. Come on, man. Come on. Coach Prime was in a unique position to say fuck that. And shit, Ali, when he did that three and a half years, he said he went broke. Joe Frazier had to goddamn loan this man money. Bill Russell wasn't getting these checks like these boy. Not at that time. The NBA wasn't like that yet. Don't look at the NBA now and think it's the NBA. No, it wasn't like that. Sidney Poitier was getting good money, but he wasn't getting no damn $20 million a year like these boys getting. Of course, you had to adjust for inflation. But no, he wasn't like that. They still couldn't be bought. Unbow, unbow. So it turned out to be just business. Turned out to be just business. Use us as a stepping stone. Which happens a lot here in the state of Mississippi. And I'm seeing motherfuckers from uh, PWI, like my uh, school, Southern Miss, uh, and other schools, and even some other HBCUs acting like this shit don't, ain't happening to them as well. Dan Mullen used Mississippi State to get to Florida. He did. Larry Fedora used Southern Miss to get to North Carolina. Said it wasn't going nowhere. But he did. 
Jay Hobson used all corn to get the Southern Miss. He did. And we'll see about Lane Kiffin. That glow got them to go to Auburn. We'll see about Lane Kiffin. But I'm tired of this mother. I'm tired of Mississippi being folks, stepping stone, being people's punchline, the jokes, and all that kind of shit. I'm tired of that shit. They're my home, Jack. There's a lot of your grandmama's home, your granddaddy's home. I'm up with that move up place. Be... It's from here, down south, Mississippi. The home of the great Walter Payton, home of the great Jerry Rice. Mississippi. B.B. King, Mississippi, Mega Elvis, Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? These are legendary people. Sister Thea Bowman, right from where I'm from. Candidate for sainthood. She's a candidate for sainthood. This is Mississippi. The people just use us. Entertainment business, use us. And it's partly our fault, because we don't value the folks that's here. So it's part of our fault. We 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 be wanting somebody from outside and we value them and put the spotlight on them and cherish them and all that kind of shit. You see it with Ralph? You come through with a song, you from Baton Rouge, goddammit, folk on this. You from Memphis, folk on this. You try to get some motherfucker listen to you up, yeah, and you from Mississippi. I ain't trying to hear that. You prove to folks that you can coach and you from Mississippi. They don't want you. Rather go get somebody from the outside who don't want to be here, who don't have any ties here. So Paul is our fault because we don't support the motherfuckers right here at home. So that's another thing about us. And so if you're going to get out on us, you can get out on us for the old two things. We too often don't support our own right here, and we believed the bullshit. Because remember, I just named all those coaches that use these places. I doubt Dan Mullen said he was at Mississippi State up there in Starkville to be a change agent. Probably said, usual coach speak, want to you know, graduate the football players, want to teach them to be men, win some football games. Laugh for door, same thing. They lied and said he was going to stay, but he, he didn't say he going to change thing in Hattiesburg and uh, all the racial bullshit that go on down there in Forest County, Mississippi, I doubt. He was saying he's gonna change any or try to change any of that. Jay Hobson, uh, real ones that fuck with all corn. Maybe y'all can enlighten me. Did Jay Hobson say he was gonna use his white privilege to uplift the downtrodden people of Lorman, Mississippi? Did he say he was gonna go over there to Port Gibson and and deal with some of the fuck shit that go on over there? Did he say he was gonna go down there to Natchez and help out with some of the kids, uh, uh and some of the shootings that be going on down there? Y'all let me know. But I know that that's the type of shit Cole Prime was on. But now over there in Colorado, it's about the 60%, 70% black boys that's in front of them. That's what it's just about. Because remember, that's the Garden of Eden. Perfect deal. I'm here to tell y'all, again, as somebody who didn't been to a PWI, that shit ain't perfect, Jack. And I know Colorado ain't either, goddammit. It ain't. And this climate... At this time, with the QAnon bullshit, and you got the Oath Keepers want to kill black people, Jewish people, and uh, liberals in general. You got the goddamn Proud Boys want to kill black people, Jewish people, and liberals in general. That was Colorado where that young King Elijah McClain was killed after that police encounter. That was out there in Colorado. Colorado ain't no goddamn garden to eat coat. And he doesn't have the same problems and challenges as Jackson, Mississippi. But if you're going to be a, if God called you to be a change agent out there, you had to deal with some of that shit. Call them police out for that bullshit. Call, call out some of the, the, the racial things that you might see on campus. If your boys don't perform and, and the fan base get to calling them niggas, or if one of your players like uh has happened to them, like what happened to me when I was at Southern Miss, going into a bathroom stall and seeing written there, all niggas go home. If that happens, 
to some of your boys and they experience some shit like that be a change agent and call them white folks out about that bullshit out there do that or uh if one of your boys have happened to me would would happen to them what just happened to me the other day well I'm, i just post a video about my damn football team the green bay packers and some white supremacist nazi motherfucker calls me a boy tells me to shut the fuck up boy because i got on uh, i had on my packer jersey and i'm rocking my traditional uh a hat can motherfucker think this stand for atlanta instead of me first letter and he tells me to shut the fuck up boy so you know you gonna have some nazis in the stand okay this dude this dude here was a san francisco 49er fan by the way who said this see see how that shit crazy these motherfuckers can be fan of you on the field but don't fuck with you in real life. So some of them 67% black boys is gonna go out there. You gotta deal with that. I've seen this. I've seen this. I've been in the stands before at Southern Miss when you got like the, the white fraternity boys up over us sitting like uh, above with the black section really where we were sitting and motherfuckers start throwing shit. You know, throwing shit high in the hand of course, but throwing shit. And hitting folks in that section while simultaneously rooting for the 67 percent 70 to 80 percent black boys is on the field you can call that out let's see if you call that out the gods sent you to colorado so let's see what change you can provoke them. Put it on some. Thank you so much for watching my daddy's YouTube channel. Make sure you like, share, and turn on your post notifications. Okay, how do I do it?